G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. This is an, a very special one. Ladies and gentlemen, this is game number one in the grand final for the Road to Red Bull Wallalo Legacy. I don't know exactly which week it is, but it is a weekly final, which basically means that we have got two of the best players in the world, arguably the two best players in the world going toe to toe in a best of five series so we're going to be casting every single game in this series it could be a three game series could be a five game series depends how it goes it's going to be the first to three points though so starting off spawning in on the north side of the map playing as the english we've got marine lord on the south side of the map in the color blue playing as the chinese we've got beastie cutie and of course the map it is holy island holy island one of you know what i'm not even going to say one of the best map <laughs> objectively the best map in the game right now i absolutely in love with this map i think it's it's amazing it just promotes early aggression it promotes uh flexible uh, aggression as well you see aggression on the water you see aggression on the land you just see towers you see everything you know it's it's incredible i love this map i wish we could i, I wish we could see a holy tournament played where it's just all only this map now Beast are going with an interesting opening here. So opening with a village. I wonder what this is all about. I want to speak to him about this, try and understand it a bit more because I actually saw he plays China on this map a fair bit and he always opens with a village opening like this. So I might have to go in and study this, just work out the timings a little bit because perhaps this is the most optimal build order when it comes to China, just because... There can be times where you're looking as China to try and... It, it, typically, it's going to be around that 19 population mark where you, it's starting. you're starting to struggle a little bit with your food and wood balance, and it can be hard to squeeze in that, that second house. Uh, but obviously, he doesn't need to do that here with the village. So perhaps there's there's something that he's worked out where I, he can squeeze in a village and then go for a dock straight up. Perhaps that's it. But let's talk a little bit about what's happening on the other side of this map. Marine Lord already got the second fishing boat out. Plenty of villages over on wood as well. We can see seven villages over there. And now let's talk a little bit about this matchup. So for anybody wondering, this matchup, China versus English, it's an interesting matchup. England are uh, probably favored a little bit in the early game. And then in the mid game, it goes towards a more China orientated, uh, you know, favoritism i guess we could say and then in the late game uh, it becomes significantly more english fa favored now i don't know if that's still the case after the changes to china as you guys are aware china got a whole bunch of changes in the most recent patch uh, which has brought them forward a lot earlier with their power spike so they it, it's not necessarily that they power spike earlier but rather they've just got a bit more power in the early game specifically with the imperial academy now being able to train imperial officials it just makes china a lot more flexible well not, not necessarily a lot more flexible but it makes them a lot more reliable you can almost guarantee that a china is is going to have their four imperial officials out by the 10 minute mark where that never was the case before and if you did go for it you were typically punished by having less villagers uh, but um We'll take a look at how this game goes. Now, when it comes to what you'd expect for this game, heavy fighting on the water. Uh, obviously, the water, it's an incredibly important economic resource, uh, but not as significant of a strategic resource. So when it comes to strategic resources, we're I'm more talking about, you know, the militaristic advantage that you gain from obtaining the water. There's nothing, in my opinion, to prevent you as a China player from, you know, taking this, this early fishing economy, maybe getting a junk or two out, going and applying some pressure over to your enemy's side, and then behind it, doing like a two or even a three TC Song Dynasty boom. Give up the water, let your enemy have that, and then it's about holding on and trying to stay alive. Now, we haven't seen anybody do that. I, I guess the most similar thing I could really think of is, you know, the crackety here style where we saw those four TCs coming out with the Song Dynasty. I think that that's definitely a viable strategy for China, especially on a map like this where you want to, where you could give up water. Now, the most common thing that we do typically see out of, of Chinese players, though, is going to be that sort of semi-fast castle. So the idea is that you're just looking to get one junk out, maybe even a second junk out. And the idea is that you're just going to harass your enemy's fishing boats with it, try and keep the, en the enemy on their side, and then try and get up to castle as quickly as possible and get up to those war junks. But I'm curious to see what direction Beastie goes and whether he's going to be doing that same thing. But we can see he's already got quite a lot of villages here on gold, which is potentially indicative of that. Uh, so the fact that he's got five villages here on gold, this is a lot more than what you would normally see China going for. Imperial Academy is going to be going down. Handful of villagers going to be tapping away. It looks like three for now. Scout just working that one down. Beastie just going to be 
heading back towards his base for the moment. He spots out the Council Hall coming down from Marine Lord as well. So Marine Lord, I'd expect him to put on a bit of hurt at the early stages. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Beastie stop by a stable potentially. Maybe get one, two, three horsemen out, something like that, and then keep going up. And then typically you'd want to transition into Lancers, Nest of Bees, and then on the water you've got those War Junks. And the reason why you want to go for War Junks is just because they've got that extra range. And we do actually see a second dot coming down for Beastie, which is indicative of... Well, not really much, to be honest, because basically it just gives him a safe spot. Excuse my S's right there. It gives him a safe spot or a safe space to put three more fishing boats. Uh, and it's also going to give him the ability to, to create a second uh, a, a second dock. or Sorry, a, a second uh, uh, production unit. A second boat. Let's go with boat or ship uh, from that. But uh, we do see the age up coming through now for Marine Lord. And it is going to be a, an aggressive opening here. So the barracks coming back now. Uh, Beastie did move away from his enemy's base to come and repel that scout. Successfully doing so means that, as a result, he's not going to spot this barracks and doesn't know about the spearmen. But we do have Beastie just going for a pretty stock standard play so far. It's just going to be the Song Dynasty, but a lot of villagers moving down towards this gold. Now, this could be a sign of one of two things. Now, the first thought would, would uh, on seeing this is that it would be a fast castle. Second thought upon seeing this would be that he's looking to play a very heavy um, feudal age taking advantage of the junks as much as possible. But we know it's not going to be junks because he's got absolutely no villagers on wood at the moment. So everything at the moment, he's doing it by the book. I, I think the most important thing he's got to be careful of is, you know, the enemy... Uh, it's highly likely the longbows do make their way around here and start harassing this gold. So he's going to start thinking about a secondary gold as an option as well. Longbows on the front side have already come in on that wood line. It's going to be starting to attack that one down. Men at Arms also going to be coming in. I did not expect this. A Men at Arms coming out. Wheelbarrow coming through for Marine Lord as well. We do see a second dock getting added in for him. He's going to be moving into galleys. Uh, now keep in mind that your galley is going to absolutely crush the junks of the Chinese. So I think it works out, you know, maybe one galley could take on, you know, 1.8 junks, something like that. That's typically why as China, you want to try and get to that war junk as quickly as possible. But you can see just how heavy he is right now. But look, I I'm loving this because... It absolutely everything that I sort of alluded to in the early game is exactly what we're seeing, you know, uh, essentially going for that fast castle, but stopping by a stable, which is the correct play, uh, and then looking to get up. But we haven't really seen him move towards that fast castle just yet. Also going for Imperial Examinations, which I do think is quite interesting. I don't really think it's necessary this early on. If we want to take a look at these, uh, these, um, the mining camp, the mill, as long as you're, you're collecting these on cooldown, it's going to be very hard for you to stack that up. With the exception of maybe the mill, it will stack up, but it's not going to be super duper important collecting that. Like, realistically, you're not going to be saving yourself a huge amount of resources by getting it. But I do love the way that he's moving across the map, going up towards that age up now. Spearman going to be out here as well. Second barracks going to be coming down, but Beastie... Pretty close to that age up now. Things looking good for him. He's got plenty of gold coming through for this as well. So only going to have five villagers on gold. And this is one of the things that I talk about quite often with China is I still don't think pro players have really adapted to the China uh, that is th that is this new China where you've got all these excess imperial officials because that means that you're going to be gathering up all this extra gold that you wouldn't typically be getting. And as a, ro as a result, your timings are going to be a little bit weird. You're like, well, where's all... How can I hold all this gold? You know, it's that classic limes meme. You guys remember the limes meme from, <laughs> what, 2007? I can't hold all these limes it's the exact same with china i can't hold all this gold looks like he's gonna be losing a whole bunch of horsemen here to the galleys and interestingly marine lord has yet to move out on water whatsoever so maybe a good a bit of a good read here by beastie not even sending a single junk up here just because it would have been intercepted by the three galleys but by, by the same token down on this side of the map we do see wheelbarrow coming in for beastie aggressive over on that north side he did look to try and gather up some wood on this front side. He's going to move to the back, though, which is 100% the correct decision. Obviously, we know about the pressure that's coming in. Wouldn't even wouldn't be surprised to even see a wall come across here just to that town center, just so that no sneaky units can come in from this angle, which, of course, there's always going to be that option. But Beastie now going up to the Castle Age, and we actually see explosive junks coming out. This was not what I expected at all when I was thinking Castle Age junks. Not at all. Uh, it has been a while since I've seen these bad boys get any work out, but Looks like Beastie going to be able to jump inside there. And he's got a third spot in there. Fishing boat going to be jumping in safely. Explosive junk was due to come out. It was cancelled, though. 
Uh, so we'll have to wait and see exactly how he looks to play. He's, he is uh, full on population at the moment. Those units are moving around. So Beastie's sort of, I, I guess I'd, I'd say failing judgment here. Should have realized that this was going to be a potential option for, for his enemy to, to go into. There is a Knight out. Knight going to be doing a decent job. Or Lancer rather going to be doing a decent job. But is up against multiple Spearmen. Charge going to be coming through for him. Now remember, this whole time on the water, he's under attack. But at the same time, fishing boats are going to be safe in the corner. Managing to idle out that economy. We can see he's got no food economy at at the moment whatsoever so this is everything that he's got and you can see those units just getting completely taken out and this is really going to hurt beastie i feel like the consequence of just not getting that wall up sure you know a single longbowman taking down these villages it's going to take time but the reality is that uh, it, it, it's just painful to watch this happen happen right now very smart move from marine lord we'll take a look at his side of the map see how he's doing doesn't really look like he's thinking about an age up at this point in time. Just moving into the food economy. Beautiful houses that he's got right here. Marine Lord taking a page out of the best base builder's base building guide right there. Who was it? Uh, I'm trying to think of his name. Talisman. Talisman2208. Uh, this is this is a classic talisman build base or base build right here. Yeah, I, I bought his strategy guide. I paid a little bit extra for it because it was available on a, on a certain website. But uh, anyway, more junk coming out now for Beastie. So he's going to be in, in a good spot. Needs to drop the fishing boats out here and look to repair the war junk. Needs to try and keep it within the range here as well. It's going to be hard for him to fight this out. We'll need to focus these ships down individually. Needs to get those fishing boats out though immediately. He can't afford to lose this junk. He's got plenty of wood in the bank. He's going to be able to repair it up. The fishing boats do come out, but unfortunately it's too late. The junk going to be losing its life. And that is a huge loss right there for Beastie. He had the potential to easily swing that back in his own favor. But just these small little mistakes that we're seeing, you know, like the, the very obvious decision of marine law to come around this northern tree line like it, it just seemed very obvious that that, that was going to be the case you know you've got the barbican up on the south side this is stopping anything like if if he wants to take the long route sure he can do it but he's going to know about it and very very cheekily he comes in on this backside. but it just seems so blatantly obvious back on this south side though Doc is going to eventually get out another war junk, which is going to be able to secure this position. Fishing will resume, uh, but obviously he's lost quite a few fishing boats. We can see he's down to three and subsequently going to be losing even another one. Oh, it was close. It was close. But behind this, Marine Lord just pretty much un untrumped, un un unconcerned. All of his, his galleys have just returned back to base. He's going to start moving them out. We can see he's also going to Castle Age as well. Let's see if we can find that landmark. Where is this? Where is the landmark? Oh, it's right here. It's, it's on top of the other landmark. That's why it makes it so hard to see. But very interesting style from Marine Lord. We now see the Lancers coming out. I'm, I'm loving just the Spearmen being thrown in here. They've been very, very potent in dealing with just the handful of Lancers that have come out. Going to be coming back around. I wouldn't be surprised to see Beastie look to move into a monastery as soon as possible. But Village actually going down. This is a big loss for Beastie. Marine Lord just all over the top of him. And I kind of feel like it's these small little mistakes that are starting to add up. You know, just the failure of this wall to, to come through. The, the just uh, the very slight delay here on the fishing boats coming out. He had 440 wood in the bank at the time as well, so more than enough to heal up. But now, once again, Beastie, he's going to be sending that war junk up towards the north, but he's failed to do any any real reconnaissance, and as a result, going to be losing out on this, uh, this fishing economy once again. So really, really just dicey stuff coming out. Second village going to be moving down for the Beast, and uh, yeah, at, at this point in time, things not looking good for him. We'll ride on board with Marine Lord, see how he's doing, because his fishing economy is absolutely popping off. He's got 12 fishing boats. He does manage to fall back from that war junk. He's going to be careful not to lose any of them. 125 health on this bad boy. He's going to take no shots at all from the war junk, doing just playing with fire right there. Knight's going to be coming in, or Lance is going to be coming in to the wood line. First villager does go down. Second villager going to be going down as well. Third village are going to go down here. He's managed to get three so far. Fourth one about to go down as well. He gets that one. A couple of spearmen moving back. He's still got a couple more vills over towards this east side. And now Beastie going to spot that one out. Charge going to come down. And even more of those guys going to be going down. A lot of galleys back down on these docks. Marine Lord may have his attention drawn in another area. Vill count for Beastie. 43 compared to the 51 of Marine Lord. Beastie might, get be, might be stuck in a bit of a situation here. Manages to run out. All of those knights, keeping them alive for a little bit longer. Second town center is down for Marine Lord. Obviously, that landmark, that age up landmark, manages to actually pincer one of the. Oh, this is terrible! What happened here? Step, bro. Step, bro. Oh my lord, that, that was that was not good. It, you, you you don't want to be skewered by a spear. I'll just you know from a, a, 
I'm, I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> All right, that's uh, look. I probably shouldn't have mentioned that in the same sentence as Step Bro, but we'll move forward. <laughs> we'll move forward. Ca get some Kappa Prides in the chat, hey. <laughs> but uh, now plenty of galleys have come out, and this, this is sort of the difficult spot for uh, for Beastie is that he doesn't have a decent amount of war junks out so typically you'd want to be up at about three to four war junks and that's when you'd look to try and move out in this matchup but i don't know maybe maybe i'm just playing it from a theoretical standpoint so for me you know e everything's so easy because i'm just a caster with a, a brain the size of a fucking watermelon whereas like the, these players you know they, it, it's completely different right like he, he's obviously sitting there he's playing with 400 apm he's trying everything uh to, to work out and I'm, I'm just sitting here from my ivory tower it's very easy for me me to call all this stuff out but Unfortunately for Beastie, he's going to be losing the water. And with losing the water, uh, I mean, one of the considerations to make is, you know, if Beastie had won the water, he, he denies this fishing economy from his opponent. Beastie at the moment sitting on 48 vils compared to the 58 of Marine Lord. Uh, but obviously when you consider that there's nine fishing boats out here, that starts to even up quite a bit. Uh, and, and would really keep him on even ground. He's got Song Dynasty going for him. He's working towards that second town center as well. It should be up shortly. Oh, might I take it back? It's three town centers. Uh, and th this is 100% the right play. I love this play. Uh, the next thing he needs to do from here, supervise this hunt. He needs to make sure it's all uh, being uh, all going to the same mill. Supervise it, get like 30 vills down there and just pump out a whole bunch of villagers. Start hitting that, that 110, 120 villager mark. And you're going to be perfectly fine for the late game. The question is whether he's going to be able to do that. Let's wait and see exactly what he, do he does. A little bit of a... Um, I, I guess you call this a bit of an error here, unfortunately. Supervising the mining camp. Got a lot of villagers here that are going to be dropping off to the town center. Not only do they not generate tax, but they're missing out on that extra two gold that the Imperial uh, official... Or, or extra three gold, actually. Uh, because these guys have got wheelbarrow. Um, so, yeah, it, it becomes difficult once you when you've got so many resources around the back of your base. S got walls coming up towards the north, so looking at wall up that side, we did see a Lancer getting skewered towards the back of the base. Another one going to be going down. He's being chased around this entire map. Spearman just doing a great job of just raiding and also at the same time defending. Nesta B is going to be firing off. I wouldn't be surprised to see Marine Lord looking to begin going for some Springles or at least starting to invest into Siege. Instead, he's just going to go down the route of going for Lancers. A heavy amount of Lancers coming through. We've got a. We've also got a monk going to get caught out by the scout. Scout going to fall back away from the shoreline. Realizes the potential danger that's there. Galleys have well and truly secured this up. And now I would love to see from Marine Lord. I know this. I know this is crazy. Just chuck a dock in this corner and start doing some sick, some fully sick trades. Get some trade ships out and just start trading down here. Oh my lord! When you are ahead, get further ahead. That is what they say. That is what the beastie says. Uh, but uh, I mean, at this point in time, Marine Lord looking very far ahead. Village account sixty-eight. Beastie on 59, so not terrible. And, I mean, Beastie's scaling well. He's done the right thing as well. He's come down to this position. All the deer are very close to the mill. Uh, and he's got plenty of villagers down here. So this is going to be supporting his villager uh, addiction uh, in, in, the, in the short term. So definitely the right choice. The next thing that he's going to start thinking about is his farm transition. Ideally, he wants to delay the game. But this is something that I talked about a bit earlier. The problem is in this matchup now is that the Chinese late game is nowhere near as strong as it used to be. Or at least that's the way that it feels. It may be different. It may be different, perhaps... Perhaps Chinese late game's actually stronger and we just haven't really explored it yet. That could be the case. It's going to continue. Just needs to be careful with these deer here. That they're not too close to the town center. We'll watch with these ones and see how they go. But Spearman going to be turning their attention towards that uh, towards that position. Sacred site in the center being captured up. Keep in mind there is a second sacred site over on this island. Uh, now, I will just clarify, you cannot walk across this at all. There, there is no ability to walk across this. Uh, it is deep sea. I don't know exactly why it, it is like this. Maybe it was like that in a, in a previous game mode, but or in a previous version of the map, perhaps. But uh, you, you cannot walk across that with units. You will need to use a transport ship. Beastie trying to hold on, though. The Nest of Bees numbers slowly climbing. He's on two at the moment. Shokunu going to be coming out for him as well. Not something that I suspected would be coming out, uh, considering how deep we are into this game. Normally, you either see the Shokunu really early or really late, but you never really see it in the mid game. But perhaps that's changing. More walls coming up for him on this south side, but obviously control of the water has been well and truly wrestled in the favor of a Marine Lord. So he's going to be more than capable of preventing that wall from going up and constant raids will be coming in. We do see a raid down to the south, raid up towards the north and a little bit of a quick wall coming in from Beastie. He's going to be firing off towards his position. The horseman going to be running through, looking to try and connect with the siege. He manages to get one stabby stab in, two stabby stab. I feel like I'm counting right now as the spring on emplacement comes in from the Barbican. Villager's going to get pulled to repair. He's got six of them there. 
Trying his best to keep them in his air, but down towards that south, that big raid coming in, and look at the villagers that are going down. Beastie not paying attention. Definitely feels like he may not have been, he may be on tilt today, potentially. Maybe not on tilt, but just, it definitely seems like he's distracted. Maybe the doggo's in his room, giving him a little bit of the, giving him a little bit of the kiss, something like that, but Springlord getting some decent damage off there. You can see how much it shreds that. Beautiful job by the Nest Beast to stay alive, but on that south side, still the villagers unaffected by the raid it seems or rather beastie unaware of the raid 86 villages for marine lord compare that to the 77 of beastie still not terrible despite losing what was probably like what 10 villages down here he's got a pretty decent economy though he's got plenty of villas in queue lots of uh lots of resources to play with uh, when it comes to monks i don't think he's actually got a, a monastery down so it's just gonna be all the relics uh at the moment for his opponent not the best stuff. Now, we do see a blacksmith that was... Oh, no, that's a market. Uh, blacksmith back here. Upgrades are coming through. Plus two range attack. Looks like a horseman did try its best to come through. Not going to be the case. Another raid on the wood line for the fourth time, fifth time. There's been a lot of raids on this. But now moving out towards this uh, this central position. He's got to be careful because there are units that are roaming in a transport. Actually, that's not a transport ship. They're just moving towards that position like it was a transport ship. Uh, but Spears coming in for a raid. Marine Lord just really looking good today. He is all over Beastie when it comes to this. He it definitely feels like he's got Beastie's number. But still, he holds on. He tries his best to keep it alive. But now, second sacred site going to get captured up here. Marine Lord going to be triggering that victory condition. So get your countdowns out. Get your timers out. The Beastie is going to be under threat. 2044 is what I saw. So we're going to be calling it at 3044. Now, obviously, if Beastie steps on the sacred site without Marine Lord having a unit there, then that's going to be good for him. It prevents that timer from ticking down. But now Beastie going to be holding on for dear life as the knights, or rather the horsemen, try their best to stab down that nest of bees. Not going to be successful. It stays alive. It is an actual... Hold on. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a clock tower nest of bees. So had it been a normal nest of bees, it would have actually died. Now we see walls coming down on the opposite side. Marine Lord looking to gain even more control over this central location. Spears once again coming in for another raid. Marine Lord loves his Spearman raid. It, it, it is his signature move. And Beastie now finally going to be dropping down this wall. I can't help but feel like this is a little bit late. I would have loved to have seen this coming down at, you know, the 10, 11 minute mark. It would have been perfect. Units once again going to be cleaning up. Was that a crossbow? I, I'm pretty sure that's a crossbow, not a Shukunu. Does He's got a lot of feathered... That, that, that was a very painful death. I don't know if you guys saw that. It was a slow death, a painful death. And I feel sorry for witnessing that. Uh, it looks like it may have been a Chokunu just because... Yeah, that, that was a Chokunu death. Okay, so not going into crossbows. And a good thing that he's not going into crossbows because there's no armored units in that battalion. But over in this side, we do see more men at arms now starting to come out. Last time we saw these guys were in the... Well, the Dark Age, I think, was when we saw it. But still Beastie holding on for dear life. 146 population compared to 133. Actually, 133 for Beastie, rather. 144 for Marine Lord. So still not terrible for him. He keeps his head above water. Marine Lord with a lot of resources stacked up in the bank at the moment. We'll take a look at the central sacred site. He does have a keep going down on it. Now, I'm curious which direction he goes for in the event that he starts thinking about Imperial. Is it going to be? Because obviously it is a sacred site victory game here. There is the potential that we actually see a... Uh, not a Wingard Palace, but rather a Barkshire Palace. Oh, the Barkshire Palace. Yes, we may see, indeed, a Barkshire Palace as the cut-through comes through very quickly. Chokunu going to be on the on this backside. Actually, their, their archers, rather, going to be back here. Look at these basic archers. You know, I never really see Chinese archers. They look so uh, they look so alien to me. I'm just, you know, I, you never really see them that much because obviously the Chokunu really takes precedence. But in the center, look at this. We got some towers coming out. Beastie taking a, a, a page out of Casper's book here, being inspired by the madman himself. Looking to outpost up all of the center here. We can see Springwood emplacements have come through. So he's going to be looking to challenge this position. We do see trebuchets are coming out. One in queue, one out for him as well. Instead of going into keeps, he's just going into outposts. And I do like this. I do genuinely think outposts are... Look, it's probably a little bit better to just go into outposts than it is to keeps. I think may maybe if you're looking to contest a specific point like a sacred site, then maybe a keep is, is worth it. But obviously, incredibly expensive. You know, once, once you start thinking about repairing this bad boy, this is when it really starts to be hard to justify. Trebuchet now going to be firing down at the outpost. Now, one of the things to note, outpost obviously only going to take two shots to take out, but there is the chance that the trebuchet misses. Uh, so with these smaller buildings like the outpost, we'll watch and see whether it actually it manages to hit second one. Second shot he hits, uh, but moves the villagers back. So he might not be paying attention here, uh, but uh, always got to be careful with this. So it's only going to be hand cannon slits that are on the front line here. 
The rest of these have got the spring on emplacements. There we go. There, that was a miss. That was a miss. Swing and a miss, counterweight trebuchet. Good luck on the next one, but you're not going to miss a keep. I'll, I'll tell you that much. The, the way that the targeting works, the keep is way too big. So maybe, who knows? Maybe that's... Oh, a little bit too slow there, but now we've got to keep coming down for Beastie. So he's looking to hold this position. Springled actually going to be coming out. Nesta B is going to be firing down upon it. He's going to be careful not to lose these units as the Springled look to try and fire down on the counterweight trebuchet. But now, all of a sudden, Spearman going to be moving up towards his sacred site. Outposts as well as that keep going to be firing down upon these units. Sacred site is under contest. Uh, but we do see that the clock would probably still be ticking just because those units were on the sacred site. Keep is going to get up safely. Trebuchets remain up. Beastie playing it well at this point in time. He's controlled the narrative, prevented his enemy from coming through, but the Imperial Age has now been reached by Marine Lord. This is where things start to get dicey. The Trebuchet under attack right now from those Springlords, the Springlords, as well as the Nesta Bees. We did see one Nesta Bees go down, but now that keep is going to be looking to try and defend this position. Imperial Age has come through for Marine Lord. We'll take a look and see exactly where he's gone with that landmark. It's going to be a Wingard Palace that has come down. It is the classic English landmark. One of the best landmarks in the game. Let's see what direction he goes. It's just going to be the, the Wingard army, so no real surprise there. Obviously has access to the Wingard Raiders and the Wingard Rangers. Not going to be using it just yet. Wants to get those extra Trebs out because why the hell not? You're in the late game. Trebs are an amazing unit. You know what I'd love to see? You know what? I, I feel like... Oh, insufficient start. There, there it is, boys. There it is. Marine Lord down to zero stone. What I was going to say is what I wanted to see is like an increase in the population cost of Trebs. I feel like Trebs are too good. Uh, so, you know, maybe just changing it from like three to four. Just something, you know, something... It, it, it's meaningful, but at the same time, it's not a big nerf. Like, you're still going to make trebuchets. It's just, you know, if, if someone has got eight Trebs out instead of that costing, you know, 24 population, it now costs 32 population. So it's a little bit more impactful in the late game if you've got that big Treb mass. Uh, you're not going to get... Uh, you're not going to get uh, as many units out on the field, but now those villagers going to be moving around the edge. Marine Lord spots this out from a mile away. He's got the outpost there looking to provide line of sight. Beastie going to be looking to drop a keep down somewhere. You can see he's got 900 stone in the bank. Manages to hold this central sacred site. At least for the moment, a single spear is going to be decapping it. But uh, unfortunately, it loses its life, and we extend out this game a little bit longer. Still no idea exactly how long we've got on that timer. If there, if there was only a way for us to know now, I know that people are going to be like, check the sacred tracker, Drongo. Bro, it literally just helps me count. That's it. It's like, hey, there's two sacred sites in the game. Uh, if, if you couldn't count, there's the first one. There's the second one. Congratulations. That's... We, we, we have an entire piece of UI functionality just dedicated to that. Oh, thanks. Thanks, devs. Super helpful. Super duper helpful. Uh, but in all seriousness, though, uh, please please add the uh, please add it to the UI. Men at Arms looking to hold on on the central sacred site. Prevent it from being decapped. Do we see it? Even though there are Chokunu on here, it's going to be tough up against those elite Men at Arms. You can see how much health or how much armor they've got on them. Now, one of the things to note is that elite Men at Arms are, from the English are one of the only units in the game that will counter uh, elite Chokunu. So elite Chokunu with their full upgrades do 11 damage a pop. Uh, so the elite men at arms, however, with armor clad, aka armor chad, go up to a total of 10 armor, which means they're only doing one damage a pop there. Compare that to other sieves, which have like, um, which, which have say three uh, or, or only have eight armor and you're doing three damage instead of one, which might seem like not a lot, but I promise you it's a fucking huge amount. Uh, but, uh, We'll take a look now at Beastie's base as he's going to be <laughs> he's going to be doing the classic mistake here of dropping down proxy stables around his spirit way. It's like, uh, 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 Beastie, that is not how it works. Granaries have come down for him. A whole bunch of stables. I think he might... Is he going for a landmark snipe? Is he going for a landmark snipe or is he just doing a bit of a switcheroo? He might just be doing a switcheroo. In fact, you know what? I don't even think he can afford to go for a landmark snipe just because the sacred site is ticking. Now, I don't know what the timer is exactly on this bad boy, but I don't think he's got long. I think at most he's got two, maybe three minutes. Uh, Treb's Landing both of their shots. Good job, Treps. Right now, looking like Kobe Bryant hitting those free throws. That was impressive. Uh, these guys are not missing a single shot. Let's see if they can hit the Hulk, though. Here we go. <laughs> this is going to be a bit of an advanced shot. He hits the Hulk. Hulk gets upset. He's like, <laughs> that is the all typical Hulk noise. That is the sound that they make. Meta Arms moving forward. He's trying to challenge this sacred site. Once again, crossbow numbers are coming out. Treps uh, firing down upon that. He takes out the Hulk. It's a swing. It's a hit. It's a 10-pointer right there. A three-pointer, at least, I'll give him. We are talking about basketball, I guess. Up towards the north side, we do see an attack coming through. It's going to be those knights looking to poke and prod. Not going to be able to find anything just yet. Outpost going to be coming up. You can only suspect it's going to be a springled emplacement or, or maybe even a cannon emplacement, potentially. Sacred Sight still not challenged. We can see it's down to about 30%. 
Palace Guard's going to get taken out. Trebuchet's firing off upon the units below it. Plenty of Springles out here, but not a lot of units. And Beastie's got a whole bunch of Siege. He's trying to embrace that concept of Siege cutie. But unfortunately, the Men at Arms just going to be able to run amongst the, the masses here and just force these units back. At the same time, the keep going to be going down. I'm curious to see how Beastie holds onto this because it doesn't seem likely at this point in time. The Trebs just continuing to fire down upon this keep. And with that, the keep is going to be going down. Springlord's managed to make it behind. We do see the Imperial Palace is coming up. Beastie looking to go into that Yuan Dynasty. Dynasty? Dynasty? What? Dynasty? I don't even know what that is. I, I, I don't even think that's legal. Uh, but we do see he's heading into that Yuan Dynasty. Three minutes until the Sacred Defeat. There it is. So get get your clocks out. What are, what are we? 29.44. So 32.44. Get your timers out, fellas. Imperial Palace, well and truly, going up now. You know you know, we got to get a picture of this. The Imperial Palace, it, it is all about the Yuan Dynasty in this late game. There she blows. Isn't she beautiful? I, I love this Imperial Palace. Uh, and part of, part of the reason why I love it is because it gives you access to seeing your enemy's villages, which is, you know, really good for targeting down villages in a raid. But uh, at the moment, there's just a lot of pressure on Beastie. Oh, immediately. Oh, immediately gets denied the keep. The trebuchets took it down. He's down to 283 stone. That is a huge misplay there by the beast. Oh, this is terrible. And now the village is just going to be like, you know what? Stuff it. We're not even We're not even building. We're not, we're not even going to bother building. Just get your shivs out, fellas. He's got textiles. He doesn't care. He's like a honey badger right now. Looking to hold on. The Springwoods taking down the central Springwoods. Looking to try and trade out. It's going to be two minutes until Sacred Defeat. Beastie holding on for dear life. At the same time, we see men at, uh, men at arms and horsemen coming in. These guys got their elite upgrades. They've got that extra attack speed coming through. It's going to be 50% total. And now the village is going to get pulled towards the Springles in the center. He's got that extra plus two range as well. But Beastie going to be holding on the clock tower. Bombard going to be the only thing that's really left here. Dishing out damage. But unfortunately, Marine Lord looks to overwhelm him in this position. And you can't help but think Marine Lord right now is miles ahead. 200 population, 10,000 resources in the bank. Both of the sacred sites. Beastie on the other side, 120 population. Absolutely nothing in the bank and no sacred sites in his pocket. Uh, it is only moments before a good game gets called. Surely there can be no way that the man, the madman, pulls this back. You know we gotta, we gotta be watching with attentiveness though, because if there's one thing you know about Beastie, he doesn't give up until the last second. Elite Fire Lancers has come in, so he's looked to use the Spirit Way. It does give you the elite upgrades and gives them at a discount price. To be honest, this is actually this could potentially work if he if he gets a decent mass of Fire Lancers out. These guys are very very strong. Uh, especially taking out men at arms because they group up all nicely like this. So they go up, 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 up. Um, and, but uh, he's going to manage to try and take out one spring. What he gets it. The second one, not going to be able to go down. Does get cleaned up. Numbers not looking terrible for him here. Getting out a nice mass of spearmen to, uh, together with the fire lancers. Looking to try and move it forward. But now Marine Lord looking to push out this position. He's completely closed in down towards that south side. He's actually got a dock working on Beastie's fish. Very, very cute. Gets the wall up as well. Says, you ain't walling me out, buddy. I'm, I need a way in. And good game gets called. Beastie Cutie going to be tapping out Marine Lord. Going to be taking the first game in this series. The next game will be coming up on this channel. It's going to be the second one. And fellas, make sure you check out EGC TV. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can catch them and at what time you will see them. Thank you so much for watching. And hey, pretty damn good game, hey? Two of the world's best going up against each other.